The Anglican Church of St Botolph's in the modern city of London has stood here since the 18th century. Vasim Mohammed attended a youth club here and now he's visiting again for an exhibition of his work encouraged by the vicar who sees art as one of the best ways of bringing different religious communities together. A message already echoed by Vasim and a vibrant batik painting behind the altar. If you look at the batik behind the altar, it's by a woman called Thetis Blacker, probably England's finest batik artist. And she has depicted a, a sentence from the Book of Revelation which describes the heavenly Jerusalem. And in the heavenly Jerusalem, you have the tree of life, which brings healing streams of peace to all the nations. But if you look at the batik, you'll notice buildings and there are Christian buildings and there are mosques. So in that batik itself, it emphasizes our commonness. Basin came back to serious involvement with Islam after meeting his wife. He has little formal art training, although he did go to a foundation course at the local college. Then his work was observational, but now he uses no living figures in deference to Islam. He uses calligraphy and text from the Quran. The painting um, itself is called Wreckage. Um, the calligraphy reads as, God make it easy for me the good things and don't make it difficult. Um, it's hope out of adversity, where the background actually is quite symbolic of uh, what is going on in the world today um, in relation to the wars, bombings, death, uh, carnage. Um, as you can see here, a spray of bullets. And I cut a bit like a surgeon, and then I start prising away and peeling away at the layers. Um, there's a leather strip in here, which I incorporated because I actually used to be a leather cutter in the East End. Um, so it's a bit of everything. Uh, the partner, Al Afu. As for those who avoid the truly grave sins and shameful deeds, even though they sometimes stumble, behold, your sustainer is abounding in forgiveness. His dome paintings are often representative of humans, connecting with a higher spirit in the shape of a moon or sun. They develop as he works on them. This painting is called the dome, and uh, it actually has um, the dome there and the minaret, which symbolizes the, the Muslim, um, the Islamic influence in Jerusalem. Then you have the, uh, the Christian architecture on that side, and then you have the wall, which is... Uh, the, the Wailing Wall, which is part of uh, Judaism. Uh, the materials I've used Hessian and gouache acrylic. Rampart Street in the East End is where Vasim grew up, in a large ramshackle terrace. His parents had come from Pakistan. Revisiting the streets where he played as a child brings back vividly the memories of those early visual influences. He spoke about this at his new home in a leafy North London suburb. We lived um, in an old uh, house which was, uh, I think, nearly about 100 years old. It used to be a, a seaman's rest, a, a hotel, a seaman's hotel, because um, the river's nearby. Um, there was no surrounding buildings then, so you could actually see the river from the house. Um, and uh, we lived, I mean, my bedroom especially, um, had layers and layers of wallpaper. And uh, as children, we used to peel each layer of wallpaper, and it would take you back uh, maybe 50, 60, 70 years and each wallpaper had a different pattern and a different shape until you got to the last bit which was concrete and then a bit of concrete would fall out and then our mother would come and tell us off you know for doing that but it's quite a fascinating house because even in the loft when we used to peel the wallpaper back um, the, uh, when we got to the wall itself there was actually uh, writing, like notes left by some of the seamen that used to live there. There was not many Asians living there at that time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a good sort of childhood. We could play freely in the streets. Um, but I was always fascinated by the, the shapes, the colours, and uh, just the, the atmosphere um, and of the environment. Um, and again, the, the peeling paint and the decomposition that was going on. It is the peeling texture in his mind's eye which Vasim, all these years later, uses to adopt some extreme and unusual methods to give structure to some of his flat painted surfaces. Methylated spirit is poured over the surface and the flames melt the layers of paint. 
They can be scored and scraped and picked at until the several layers underneath are revealed. It's almost as if that old peeling wallpaper is being given a new life. The profane and the sacred can be welded together in the finished product as a painting emerges and there are other methods. I do use a chemical which I soften the actual paintings with and then I start cutting with a scalpel and then I use very hot water which reacts with the chemical and it blisters the surface of the paint so it lifts it off the surface and then it goes back down again and then I can start prizing things open, um, making incisions, peeling the paint back and so forth and then I'll put washes over it as well um, and then maybe change the colour and stuff and that's my preparation a lot of the times. Vasim says he often doesn't know how a painting will emerge. This is another from his dome collection with the obvious visual reference to spiritual city landscapes. It's a painstaking process building up the angles and directions for the viewer to take in a pleasing whole. His toolkit tells its own story about the range of the artist's artifacts collected over the years. Here he's using watercolour to blend in a sharper contrast. As he works he creates a new wall which is pleasing to the eye. In a converted dockyard by the River Thames lives one of Vasim's best customers. Carolyn Perry was at the British Museum and is now manager of the Petri Museum of Egyptian Archaeology. She's a mentor from the days when Vasim sold his art on a market stall. For her, a precise understanding of the texts he uses is not necessary to fall under the spell of his work. What I very much liked about Vasim's work is the fact that we have the calligraphy against this very textured background because it really is reminiscent of a lot of Islamic art across the centuries. In Vasim's case, the background is very contemporary because he's using the texture and the, the way he's manipulating the paint, etc., and this sort of idea of stripping and the layers to make something that's quite different. This painting inspired Carolyn in her office, and she bought it for her home. The painting originally hung in my office and I used to look at the painting every day and it became part of my life and I just thought I had to own it. It's got a lot of depth to it and I like to look at it and sort of contemplate really. This is as blue as a lapis stone but it's also the crafting of the design which makes this work so vibrant. What I find amazing about that work is the different layers that are going on. It's a 2D piece of art, but it actually almost has a 3D effect. The gold calligraphy almost looks like a sort of sphere of gold lettering and the cube shape behind it, you, it almost feels as though there's a sort of luminosity coming from behind the painting. Carolyn's house is almost a gallery itself and even in the bedroom there's another large painting by Vasim, this time a more restful and serene turquoise colouring. In the hall Vasim's signature with the Kaaba motif is on an early painting of the village where his parents came from in Pakistan. He spent holidays there. The most interesting thing about that was that when I first bought that painting I had no idea that it was inspired by the village where Vasim's mother comes from. And bizarrely enough, the village, although I've never been there, holds a particular interest to me because it's where Alexander the Great was very, very badly wounded indeed when he was in his campaigns in India. At home, Vasim hangs another picture. This one with the hallmark calligraphy is called Beyond Partition. To the left, the larger present, and to the right, the smaller past, almost joined by a trail in the desert. I don't know if you use anti Baxter and things like that, you know, like that kind of. As Vasim says, it's time to move on, to be bigger in heart and mind as well.